Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Shirag Patil. You're watching Consider This. And our guest on the show tonight, we have the Menteri Besar of Johor, Datuk Hasni Muhammad. Uh, welcome to the show, Datuk Hasni. It's good to have you joining us today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Melissa and Sharad, for inviting me for this uh, uh, very meaningful uh, opportunity for, for me, actually, uh, be uh, available at the uh, uh, program today. Uh, all right, so we've got half an hour with you, so we want to uh, get through some kind of, of the, um, key issues of the day. I think uh, let's begin our conversation first with the COVID-19 situation on the ground and Johor's approach to managing this pandemic, specifically the uh, specifically through vaccination, if I may. Uh, what have been some of the state-specific challenges that you as Menteri Pesaf had to deal with, uh, particularly with the state-level vaccination rollout in Johor? And since we've had a couple of months to learn from some of these challenges, what lessons have you taken on board since the vaccination process began? Well, the challenges is actually uh, um, meeting the expectation of the public at large. Um, they expect that uh, um, a higher number of uh, vaccination to take place uh, they expect that the um, vaccine centers are closer to their uh, uh, home and um, they were hoping that uh, certain type of vaccine uh, will be um, uh, provided to them. And uh, I suppose um, as much as that is the expectation of the public, um, at the same time, the government has um, moved forward by um, <clears throat> making sure that all the existing uh, uh, vaccine centres uh, manage uh, well. Um, all effort has been made to make sure that the uh, targeted numbers of uh, vaccination scheduled for every state uh, to happen as planned. and. Um, at the same time that uh, <clears throat> uh, all other uh, effort to manage this uh, pandemic is, uh, uh, is ongoing and uh, improve as we go along. Um, so <clears throat> I suppose um, we have identified the necessary numbers of vaccine centers. Uh, if that is the concern of the public to see more vaccine to be uh, available or uh, more num bigger numbers get vaccinated uh, uh, as we move into July, uh, August, September and until October when Johor um, plan to uh, complete our vaccination, at least 80% of our uh, population is um, uh, got their vaccination. Dr. Hasni, you know, we recently had uh, three MPs from Johor on our show talking about the specific problems that they, um, you know, have to fo uh, face. Uh, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to hear the show, but do you think that many of the problems they have are related to strategies not within your control? I mean, the state of Johor does it essentially have to follow what federal says at this point in time? It has no autonomy to re-strategize or recalibrate uh, the ground the ground approach to the either the vaccination pro, uh, program or even the testing and isolation and tracing strategies. Uh, Shara, I suppose after more than a year now that we are facing this uh, pandemic. Um, not only the state, but also the public at large uh, uh, is well aware about the, uh, um, I would say, the um, MCO that is being introduced, uh, reason for introducing the uh, restricted MCO. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, we, from... Uh, a control MCO or enhanced uh, MCO, we, 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 we move to the next level where 
we open up all the uh, essential services. Uh, I suppose um, whether um, the um, um, state assembly or legislative legislator that is um, uh, following through the government program, um, we have ideas that is being brought forward and uh, it doesn't fall to deaf ears. We listen to their proposal, we listen to their ideas and um, we just um, feel that uh, currently with the cooperation of everybody, uh, the system that is put in place by the government uh, whether uh, uh, the responsibility of the health department, whether the responsibility of the um, um, uh, monitoring uh, bodies like the, the police, the military, or the local authority. Um, I suppose uh, uh, it has uh, or it requires the understanding and cooperation from all uh, sector. And um, right. that is what is uh, taking place in Johor. As much as this is something which, uh, which have to be done uh, in collaboration with the federal authority, but that doesn't mean that um, we at the state level um, will have to, uh, you know, not, not, not not anything is cast in stone. So we have to look at the state uh, capacity. We have to look at the uh, state, uh, um, uh, I would say, what's best for the state in terms of... What, Dr. Hasni, what is, what is the state capacity? Because you said 80% uh, vaccination targeted by October. I'm just wondering whether that's in line with the national recovery plan that was uh, recently announced. Uh, and where are the stumbling blocks, do you see? I mean, do, uh, is this, the state of Johor is a big state, one that requires, um, you know, a, a large covers a large geographical area. H what are the stumbling blocks to getting that 80% vaccination? Is it supply? Is it uh, the, the transport, getting vaccines to people? How are you going to overcome that? Because within four months to reach 80% vaccination is, is an ambitious goal. Um. I agree that the supply of vaccine is uh, the challenge that we are facing right now. Um, we were expected to be prepared to be able to vaccinate uh, in the region of about 50,000 per day. Um, as far as the infrastructure, in order to achieve that, no issue. The state is ready. Uh, we have the... Uh, uh, the necessary, um, uh, I would say, opportunity, whether the vaccine center for industry, uh, whether the vaccination for the district at the district level, or more should be provided for the district of Johor Bahru, for instance, because th that is the most populated district. We have all that in place. We should be able to have the number of vaccinators at every uh, vaccine centers. So uh, as much as the Prime Minister has said that um, uh, requesting the public to be patient, uh, all steps and measures are being taken by the federal government. So um, at the state level, what we can do in the meantime, while waiting for the uh, vaccine to be uh, made available, is to um, increase our effort in testing uh, capacity. Uh, we have been working with so many parties, even uh, with our neighbours, Singapore, whether we could share the, um, the, the way uh, Singapore procure uh, DIY test kit, for instance. Uh, recently, we received 20,000 uh, RTK antigen test kit. Um, then with that, uh, more tests uh, can be carried out uh, uh, on the ground. And um, other than that, we are also looking at uh, getting ready uh, for our COVID uh, um, quarantine centers so that the uh, level one, level two, uh, 
they need not be home quarantined, but rather treated at the various quarantine centres that has got better um, medical attention. Uh, we have improved our hospital beds um, uh, in view that more testing, uh, more uh, people are going to be tested. Uh, we have worked very closely with um, with the industry so that their employee uh, will get uh, tested more often, more uh, regularly on a regular basis. So these are the things that um, the state finds that it is not an issue in complying what is expected or what has been planned by the federal government. Dr. Hasi, any plans to uh, purchase uh, vaccines by the state? Um, it seems to be uh, something on the minds of uh, both Slango and Strawa at this point in time. Do you have any such plans? Uh, you know, Sharad, that um, whatever vaccine uh, that will be used will have to be approved by NPRA. So we have indicated uh, uh, quite some time now that the state is prepared. Even in my stimulus package um, 3.0, uh, which was recently announced, um, the state has put aside a, a substantial amount of allocation for the purpose of purchasing uh, vaccine. So, yes, we are interested to purchase uh, and um, the uh, ministry that responsible for bringing in uh, the vaccine, uh, our uh, Mr. Hairi Jamaluddin, the minister in charge, uh, I've already indicated or the state have written to the ministry of our keen interest on uh, purchasing uh, a vaccine on our own. So, um, when, uh, yes, uh, two days back when this Kensino uh, uh, was uh, was another type of vaccine that is approved uh, to be used by the uh, by this program. So we should uh, be allowed to purchase our vaccine uh, soon, I hope. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Dr. Asni, we're going to take a quick break on the show, but let's come back and continue this conversation. After this, we'll discuss the prospect for reopening the uh, Malaysia-Singapore border and its impact on the Johor economy. Stay tuned to consider this. Hi, thanks for staying with Sharad and I on Consider This. We're continuing our look at how Johor is dealing with the pandemic. Dato Hasni Muhammad, the Menteri Besar of Johor, is on the show with us today. Uh, Dato Hasni, let's talk a little bit about the Johor economy. I understand that the Johor government recently announced its third COVID-19 economic response package to the tune of some 241 million ringgit. I'm wondering, in designing of these initiatives under this package, uh, where, what was the assessment done uh, on of the damage done on the Johor economy so far uh, when you were thinking about coming up with this with the initi initiatives under this package what were some of the main considerations for jo uh, Johor businesses and the Johor economy well pre uh, covid uh, pandemic Johor enjoy uh, growth surpass the federal uh, GDP. Um, and uh, we acknowledge that the cross-border economy uh, contribute uh, substantial to the uh, uh, Johor State economy. Uh, the construction sector, for instance, um, at one point in time, we have such a huge uh, investment by uh, Petronas in oil and gas in Pengerang. Uh, we have uh, substantial uh, 
contract uh, undertaken by the development of Forest City and of course manufacturing sector uh, as the uh, main contribute, uh, contributor to our uh, economic growth. Um, now, having said that, uh, we also uh, acknowledge that um, um, if um, we could not recover sooner on this uh, pandemic, we will be the state that is going to be the most uh, affected uh, and uh, worse than any other state. Uh, as much as we can do much better than other state uh, pre-pandemic. Therefore, um, uh, we have to understand that uh, the opening of the border, um, we have to understand that uh, it is so important that um, Johor um, keep on uh, getting the uh, uh, foreign uh, direct investment into the state, which is all now being affected. So uh, we just have to make sure that uh, we have something planned um, post COVID, uh, so that uh, when we can manage or we can have the uh, cases uh, to a manageable level, or we could uh, flatten the curve uh, to a level where we can resume to discuss again or, or, or um, talk again to maybe uh, to our neighboring country, Singapore. Uh, China or any other country that um, um, I would say uh, has the most investment in the state of Johor, if we can resume back to the uh, to that stage, um, then that will be something um, um, that is important to bring back the state economy. And, uh, and um, yeah, that's if I can in the ask meantime, you. yeah, sorry, if I can yeah. ask you. See, it, so Johor might have its own plans, right? And Johor might, in fact, run uh, its vaccination program well and so on and so forth. But it is tied to the rest of the peninsula. If the rest of the states in the federation fail to, uh, you know, keep their numbers down, it's going to have an impact on Johor, isn't it? I mean, in some ways, Johor can't go at this alone. Yes, of course. Uh, I can't be closing our border for other states, uh, you know, uh, or other um, um, public to be uh, coming over to Johor. Uh, yes, I agree, Sharad. It has to be uh, something that um, the national uh, recovery plan uh, should be something um, workable, something that, uh, that can happen. And... Um, with that uh, as the background, as far as the state uh, is concerned, uh, I just have to make sure that uh, whatever investment that we have at the state of Johor, they feel uh, protected, they feel uh, that their concern uh, is uh, also the concern of the state. Uh, I will engage more with the uh, multinational companies that is here in Johor uh, I will make sure that our local authority uh, will not do their business uh, as usual. Uh, they will have to look at ways and means as to how uh, they could uh, ease uh, uh, businesses or implement new uh, policy uh, so that uh, businesses, uh, CEOs, uh, Companies that is here in Johor uh, will will feel that they are uh, being given uh, attention, you know, right, during right. The difficult times. Yes. Well, how how are they responding to that? Uh, particularly, you know, with the um, national recovery plan, there are some business associations that have come out to say that actually this is not a, a good thing for business confidence. In fact, they're they're feeling the impact of. Uh, to, uh, of economic lockdown and these four stages. I'm wondering whether you've had dialogue with them, uh, particularly in terms of restarting the Johor economy 
by restarting perhaps green lanes with Singapore and the like. What are you hearing from the business community within Johor and in Singapore? Uh, yeah, Melissa, first I need to understand um, um, why, why do I need to do that? Um, it's, it's, it's something that um, it is have to be balanced between life and livelihood. So um, I can't be doing something that um, uh, which is against the federal uh, initiative. Uh, but um, what's best for me to do is to understand the situation in Johor. If um, I know that a lot of our retail sector, a lot of our manufacturing sector, um, <clears throat> because of our airport, our seaports, because of our infrastructure, require more export to be done, so I just have to make sure that uh, our vaccine center for industry will have to be effectively managed and uh, will have to be um, uh, put in place uh, first uh, or some priority given to this sector. That is the reason why we have our own EMU plan, a website uh, where we give uh, Johorian, a uh, Malaysian uh, who need to work across to Singapore, who need to go across to Singapore, uh, they can register themselves and um, Ministry uh, Science and uh, Innovation, uh, Mr. Hairi Jamaluddin has agreed that he will give priority to those uh, wanting to cross over to Singapore. Uh, where 100,000 vaccine has been provided for that purpose. Um, on top of that, uh, when EMU plan was put in place, up to date, uh, we have 119,000 uh, that have registered uh, and um, they are all uh, waiting for um, a date uh, or the arrival of the vaccine. Uh, in fact, the state has identified um, uh, the specific quarantine, uh, uh, vaccine center for all the 119 uh, that is registered under a new plan. So <clears throat> these are the things that the state um, can do um, in order to uh, prepare the state um, once the uh, COVID-19 cases uh, reach to a certain level where it is safe to travel I mean, it is uh, possible uh, for us to discuss again with Singapore in terms of the um, uh, to reactivate uh, RGL, the reciprocal green lane or to uh, activate the uh, periodical uh, commuting arrangement uh, between uh, Johor, Malaysia and Singapore. So, right. so right. yeah, Jata this Hasri, is the step yeah. thinking, Melissa. Yeah. Right. Jata Hasri, uh, what has been the response from Singapore? At this point in time, I understand quarantine procedures require Malaysians coming over to spend three weeks in quarantine, which is, uh, you know, they might as well just not have us over there uh, with the three week <laughs> quarantine period. I mean, are, are they I know, very concerned? Is, uh, I have uh, Minister Vivian, Foreign Minister of Singapore. Uh, to consider uh, uh, that uh, with that period of uh, quarantine that is imposed, um, it is a heavy, uh, what do you call, uh, burden uh, financially because the cost uh, incurred, you know, uh, the longer we, we, we uh, introduce the quarantine period, more cost will be... Uh, <coughs> um, so... This is the thing that I've already conveyed to Singapore, and um, uh, that is the reason why uh, we continue to collaborate between uh, Joe and Singapore, whereby recently they provide us with 20,000 uh, RTK antigen test kit, um, so that whether a shorter quarantine period or, or mm -hmm. Uh, whatever period that has been uh, introduced by Singapore is all um, for the concern that the 
uh, huge number of uh, COVID cases here in Johor. I believe that once the number is lower down to a reasonable figure, uh, maybe uh, Singapore probably can consider, not just Singapore, but any other country, might consider a, a shorter quarantine period. Right. Uh, that has new, in the time that we have left, I just want to ask you very quickly about the recent statement made by not just the Yang Diputuan Agung, but also collectively by the Malay rulers, in which uh, they said parli uh, Parliament uh, must convene, uh, sh should convene as soon as possible, but also state legislative assemblies should uh, convene as well. I'm just wondering what you will be doing in response to that, uh, the two statements that came out recently. Malaysia, about two weeks ago, I uh, organized um, a video a conference with all my uh, state legislative assembly, including members of parliament. We talked about uh, our uh, COVID-19 uh, cases here in Johor. Uh, they, I received a suggestion, a, a proposal from uh, members of the Legislative uh, Johor Assembly about uh, what the government should be focusing on. So I suppose uh, if the State Assembly were to convince, we will be talking about the same thing. How do we manage COVID and how do we uh, handle the economy of the state? Uh, what have the state done in terms of uh, helping out those uh, unfortunate um, you know, um, citizen that is affected because of this COVID-19. So, in a way, Johor has even started an unofficial uh, <laughs> assembly. So, if we were allowed to proceed with the assembly, yes, we will uh, convene uh, as soon as possible. All right. Thank you, Datuk Hasni, for speaking with us tonight. That was our conversation with Datuk Hasni Muhammad, the Menteri Besar of Johor, wrapping up this episode of Consider This. Uh, before we leave you tonight, don't forget that you can get the latest news on COVID-19 vaccines from astroawani.com as well as the Astro Awani app. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutun, signing off for the evening. Thank you so much for watching the show. Thank you and good night.